we defined we defined lenses as a normally two part one we talk of convex lens and sort of concave lens and how does it how how is a convex lens looks a convex lens looks Let's take another circle. Let's make this circle lighter in color. And that makes this circle. Let's make this circle more transparent. Now, right. Okay. Now, this portion, this portion. If I, if I, if I cut only this two. We get something called a convex lens. So that means if I take two sphere of glass transparent, and then if I cut those in and join together somehow face to face, this becomes my this becomes my convex lens. This becomes my convex lens. Okay. This becomes my convex lens. This is how my convex lens looks like. This is how my convex lens looks like right similarly similarly we can we can again we can again take two can again take two circles like this let's say we take it like this Just uh, make this more transparent. Just make this more transparent. Let's see. Yeah. We just take two circles like this. We cut. We cut. We cut it. Some technical problem. Just hold on a bit. Take this two portion of it, and we make a glass block like this. You can connect this two portion of it, and we can make a glass block. This, this is my concave mirror. This is my concave mirror. Right. So these are the two mirrors we will be discussing about, and why we will be only discussing about two mirrors? Because these are the two building blocks of a mirror. So this is a uh, since we normally say this is a biconvex and we normally say this is a biconcave because see this portion is also concave a convex this portion also convex we have taken two slices of a convex lens or two and then we have joined together that's why it's known as biconvex and this is two slices of a concave and we have joined together that's why it's known as biconcave. This is the thing that we'll be normally doing in this things, but there are many combinations. There are combinations of plane and convex lens, plane and concave lens. Based on if you go to any ophthalmation or someone who makes your spectacles, you can see the different types of lenses. When you are visiting, you can just you can check them. Okay. So we'll be doing this. So there are a few basic terms that would know, and then we we'll see some animation how things work. If I if I draw a convex lens, and then if I draw a line 
the middle of it. This is like your mirror known as principal axis. The center of this is known as your optical center. We'll discuss what's an optical center once again. From here to here, this is a point which is known as focus. Or you can say focus one, and this is my focus two. Double the distance between this, double the distance between optical center and focus is a point, is a point which is known as double the focus or 2F. So, so, 2F. See, since it's a transparent on both sides, we'll have two things. Like that. So, same happens with your concave mirror. We'll do see what's a convex mirror and then we'll go back to the concave mirror again. Okay. So, we would be uh, seeing some animations that will explain what are the kind of rays we take, why it is known as convex mirror. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll tell you as more convex mirror because if there are rays that are parallel to principal axis comes after refraction will converge to a point. Would converge to a point. Would converge to a point, which is why it is known as a convex mirror. Okay, right. But in case of a concave mirror, if this would have been a concave mirror, and then even this is. If this would have been my principal axis, okay, and this is my focus one, maybe this is my focus two, something. So, if you got some rays like this, if you got some rays parallel to this, after reflection, this would diverge. So, diverge. So, diverge. So, that's why concave mirror is known as also diverging. It's called convex lens, known as also diverging lens. Diverging lens. This is known as diverging, converging lens. Converging lens. Okay, we would not go directly. Uh, we would not go directly to. Uh, different terms and other things. Before I would love you to see where it is used. I mean, we all know, like most of the people who have got this, they've got some eye problem. Either you can't see what is far from you or you can't see what is near from you. Our normal eyesight is like 25 center. That is the minimum distance you should be keeping things in front to see. But there are few people who have to come even closer to that particular object to see what is there. So they have something called, uh, they can't see which is closure to this. So this is one. And there are and there are people who can't see which is far off. So you can't see your blackboard, what teacher is reading, writing. So you have to, you can't sit in the back bench, you have to come forward kind of a thing. So uh, there are a few problems. To solve these problems, we either use a convex lens or use a concave lens. So my next, video or something that I will learn will show which lenses to use well. Always remember a convex lens will converge it. A converge before and a concave lens would diverge the rays kind of a thing. So based on that we would be When we look at a nearby object, the lens of the eye becomes curved and a sharp image is formed on the retina. A short sighted eye is elongated its axis is longer than that of a normal eye. Therefore, to form a sharp image, the lens needs to be flatter than in a normal eye. This is not a problem when we look at a nearby object. The lens becomes less curved as it projects the image onto the retina. When we look at a distant object, the lens is flat. When the eye is short-sighted, the lens would have to become even flatter to create a sharp image. But there is a point at which the lens cannot become any flatter. Therefore, a diverging lens is used to correct our vision. When we look at a distant object, the lens becomes flat and a sharp image is created on the retina. 
The axis of a far-sighted eye is shorter than that of a normal eye. Therefore, to form a sharp image, the lens needs to be more curved than it is in a normal eye. This is not a problem when we look at a distant object. The lens becomes less curved as it projects the image onto the retina. When we look at a nearby object, the lens is curved. When the eye is far-sighted, the lens would have to become even more curved to create a sharp image. But there is a point at which the lens cannot become more curved. Therefore, a converging lens is used to correct our vision. Okay. This is a short-sighted eye. A short-sighted eye means it can see nearby objects. It can see nearby objects. It can see nearby objects. This is a short-sighted eye. Short-sighted. It can see nearby objects. So there is no problem. That means it can bulge as much as possible. So if the object is too near and this image is forming somewhere out here, no problem. This lens will bulge out for our thing. So it will convert. Because it is short-sighted, it can do this bulging. It can do this bulging. See? This lens is slowly bulging. That means it is converging it further. It is converging it further and we can see it perfectly. We can see it perfectly. No problem. We can see it perfectly. So for near object in a short-sighted eye, for near object in a short-sighted eye, we have got no problem altogether to see. So when you have a short-sightedness, that means I can, you bring the object near, I have no problem. I can read my books, I can read my story books, I can watch my computer, I can read whatever it is in front of me. The problem starts, the problem starts when a short-sighted eye is looking at a distant object. When a short-sighted eye is looking at a distance object. Let's see what happens when a short-sighted eye is looking at a distance object. When a short-sighted eye is looking at a distance object and then See, this, the image is forming here, but it had to reach this place. So, what would happen? I will get a blur image like this. You know, not really clear. You know, we, we know if you have, if you, have, you know a projector or if you are trying to focus on your camera, you know, mobile phone camera, sometimes the image is blur, so you have to focus. This process is known as focusing. That means I have to form this image on the focus or this thing should be on the focal point. Okay, this is a normal light. For a normal light, it's great. You know what happens when there is a image kind of a thing? It is, it is, it, it, see, instead of being, it becomes thinner. That means it becomes thinner. Okay, that means it is converging. For a short-sighted eye, when this eye becomes short-sighted, that means this distance, this distance is far off, then it is not able to converge this thing. It is not able to converge this thing. Or actually it has converged earlier, it should have, it should have diverged, you know. It should not converge so fast. It should go there and converge. So what is the meaning of short-sighted? Short-sighted means who can only see nearby objects without a spectacles. Short means near, small distance. Short-sighted means we can only, only see nearby objects. Nearby objects. Okay, we can't, we can't see far off objects without a So, see this lens that you are having is converging is con it, it, it is converging it is converging this image here but normally it should not convert so much it should have converged a little less so that this conversion should have happened at this point but then this eye cannot this eye have to be more thinner instead of being see if it is more curved convergence is more if it is like this the convergence is like this 
but when it becomes thinner so that is less convergence that means it will converge far off so this is far off kind of a thing but this thing sir is, yes beta sir if the eye lens uh, bulges then we can see the far objects no if the eye lens bulges that we can we'll do more convergence we'll see near objects uh, if it remains same then we can see the far objects if we give a if it not bulges then we can see the far objects yeah it has to flatten out to see a far objects it has to flatten out right to see huh. a far objects it has to flatten out because if okay. it what what happens see this this thing is just converging this light here at this point Hmm. but i want it to be more thinner i want it to be more thinner but it can't be more thinner because i have a problem we have a problem because this distance has increased for a short sighted eye for a short sighted eye means this distance has increased so when you are seeing any objects from far off this rays are almost like parallel hmm. okay far hmm. off rays are almost like parallel so so it it is it is converging here but i don't want the convergence to be here it has to converge there but that is i can't do anything because i have a short sightedness so what happens we have to put a concave lens in front of it we have to put a concave lens what happens this concave lens and this is a convex or concave see look at look at this you can understand this is a convex or concave this is my concave part and this is my convex part see this is a convex lens and uh, this part is a concave lens so this is a convex or concave lens so why we keep the convex part at front hey how, how why you keep this front okay because that's the surface we need because this surface because this surface is going to diverge the ray this surface is going to diverge the ray okay hmm. this surface is going to diverge the ray like this and then it will converge it here instead of here okay uh that's the that's the reason you could have asked why i am putting another convex lens here because it all depends upon how much what is my power it all depends upon what is my power when we will do some problem where we will be finding out the power of a lens the power of a lens is something like you know you ask you what is your power is it a minus 2 or plus 2 or minus 1.5 or minus 3 or plus 3 based on your power uh, of your eye you need to put a lens in front of your eye or we need to put a spectacles of your eye so what does this lens do it gives a divergent rays which we can focus here which you can focus here so that's your short sighted eye when there it is watching a far object now let's see what happens to a long sighted eye let us see this let us see this for a long sighted eye when a normal light it is a normal light when is a normal light is no problem what happen when the object is far off it is coming here no problem i would see now watch this if the object is here but i want to have my image here this lens is going to become flatter this lens is going to become flatter see that means the flatter lens will converge less so instead of converging coming here it will become what it will converge lens less means it will converge far off it will not converge this rays out here my converging power i have to reduce because i have converged it fast i should converge it here so i am becoming flatter once i'm becoming flatter see i'm able to do that which is good but for a long sighted eye when i'm looking at a further distance i have no problem because this is my long sightedness or we call it hypermetropia sometimes call it hyper metro pia a long sightedness is also known as hypermetropia and short sightedness is known as myopia myopia is short sightedness so you know people who are good in english sometimes use this thing in a sentence don't be myopic don't be myopic that means 
don't be short sighted have some a broad vision so myopia means short sightedness that means i can see nearby object but i have got difficult to see a black board or a white board or whatever teacher is writing but for a hypermetropia i can see i can i can see four objects but it is difficult for me to read books no people might think are isko itna dur ka dikhta hai to pass ka kyun nahi dikhta hai no dur ka dikhna difficult hai pass ka dikhna easy hai but when you understand the physics behind this thing then you would understand it because i have a problem with my eye and which is i can see far objects but i can't see near objects okay so this is a long sighted eye means i can see far objects for so what happens for a when i can see uh, when there's a when the object is from uh at from a uh, from infinity or from uh, far off thing i have got no problem with this so i'm able to see far off but what happens but what happens if i have if i have to see nearby objects let's see for a nearby object for a nearby object the normal eye can focus but when it becomes a long sighted eye the problem is for a long sighted eye to focus here to focus here it has to become more bulging that means it has to converge this lens to become a more converging lens i need more bulge i need more bulge okay for a long sighted eye i am not able to converge here i should have converge my convergent ray should be like this which i am not able to do right i am not able to do that's why what kind of a lens should i put in front what kind of a lens should i put in front what kind of a lens should i put here convex. i should put a convex lens or a converging lens this is a converging lens so whatever convergence is not possible by this lens this lens will do let's see how it works see it will do some convergence some of the convergence will happen here and rest of the convergence will happen here right so that's how a long sighted eye for a long sighted eye we need a convex lens and for a short sighted eye we need a convex we need a concave lens or convex or concave lens so this is was important thing before we start really how lenses work this is something i think you should have gone through but this is a use of a lens the best use of a lens apart from telescope microscope telescope or whatever bioscope projector is human eye because human being have some problem they have to first correct them then तो पहले तो सामने क्या है देख लेते हैं उसके बाद वी कुड सी व्हाट इज व्हाट इज देयर इन द नो स्काई मून स्टार्स इफ वी कैन सी व्हाट इज देयर इन फ्रंट ऑफ अस इट्स यूजलेस टू थिंक ऑफ व्हाट्स देयर आउटसाइड राइट सो वी आर मोर कंसर्न ऑफ सो मैक्सिमम यूजर्स ऑफ लेंसेस आर इन स्पेक्टेकल्स बिकॉज़ वी आर लाइक इन इंडिया ओनली देयर आर अराउंड 135 करोड़ पीपल एट लीस्ट आउट ऑफ दैट 30 40 परसेंट हैव स्पेक्टेकल्स So spectacles is a big business. You guys can start once a lockdown is done. Let's start spectacle shows. Okay, we'll we'll watch the animation one more time and then we'll move into the lens. When we look at a nearby object, the lens of the eye becomes curved and a sharp image is formed on the retina. This is for a normal. A short-sighted eye is elongated. Its axis is longer than that of a normal eye. Therefore, to form a sharp image, the lens needs to be flatter than in a normal eye. This is not a problem when we look at a nearby object. Okay, just hold on a bit. I think someone got disconnected. I will like sorry in one more time. Bye. Where are you? Rooney, I'm trying to. Oh, you connected. Okay, 
that's great. This is normal light. Normal light can do anything. The short sighted eye. The short sighted eye. Whenever. When we look at a nearby object, the lens of the eye becomes curved, and a sharp image is formed on the retina. A short sighted eye is elongated. Its axis is longer than that of a normal eye. Therefore, to form a sharp image, the lens needs to be flatter than in a normal eye. This is not a problem when we look at a nearby object. The lens becomes less curved as it projects the image onto the retina. When we look at a distant object, the lens is flat. When the eye is short-sighted, the lens would have to become even flatter to create a sharp image. But there is a point at which the lens cannot become any flatter. Therefore, a diverging lens is used to correct our vision. When we look at a distant object, the lens becomes flat and a sharp image is created on the retina. The axis of a far-sighted eye is shorter than that of a normal eye. Therefore, to form a sharp image, the lens needs to be more curved than it is in a normal eye. This is not a problem when we look at a distant object. The lens becomes less curved as it projects the image onto the retina. When we look at a nearby object, the lens is curved. When the eye is far-sighted, the lens would have to become even more curved to create a sharp image. But there is a point at which the lens cannot become more curved. Therefore, a converging lens is used to correct our vision. Okay, Have you guys understood anything? No. Yes, sir. No, no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, no, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. No, sir. Very good, sir. Okay. Right. Um, see, the problem is, see, the problem is uh, typically not with the lens. The problem is the size of the eye. Uh, you know, whenever there's a problem, the, the problem is with this. The screen, the screen is not, not able to come here and here based on this. The lens is not a problem. But to correct that, we have to put something. Because the axis is becoming smaller or bigger. So, when having, when I can't see, it's not with this lens. But with some of the muscles, that is supposed to make it bigger, that is supposed to make it bigger and smaller based on the object. That some muscles is having a problem so whenever whenever people say that you know you know as a kid we used to say eat fish so that you'll have a good eyesight the fish or this thing does not help this lens but the muscles of our eye that's why we should not we should not uh, we should not keep our eyes uh, you know we should not watch television or mobile phone for a long time uh, the muscles becomes very fatigued once you have a fatigued muscle, because there is no problem with the lens. Lens is perfectly all the time, from the time you are born to the time you die. Right? There is no perfect problem with the lens. The problem is with the muscles that, uh, the muscles mechanism, when the muscles become fatigued by watching mobile phone for a long time, maybe 4 hours, 5 hours, 6 hours, continuously watching, keep on watching movies and playing games, you will not be able to see what's far off. Because your eye muscles are always been using short-sighted objects. Mobile is in front of you. So that's how it works. Okay. Great. So we have watched a beautiful thing. I think now we will go and watch something different. We'll see how it can make the next lens works. If you ever wondered about the basic elements of a telescope, here's your opportunity to find out how these elements work. On the slider bar at left, select the what's to view animation, and the how's to view details of the concepts in...
Here's what we've got lined up for you the basics of a convex lens, some common terms, tools, and rules. Finally you get an idea of what's coming up next. You'd never have thought a curved piece of transparent material could produce a variety of effects, would you? To find out more about this, touch the sphere. You'd never have thought a curved piece of a lens is a piece of glass or other transparent material that has curved and polished sides that can cause light rays to either converge or diverge. Lenses work on the principle of refraction or bending of light. A converging lens or a convex lens is a lens that converges rays of light that are traveling parallel to its principal axis. Converging lenses are bulging across their middle and thin at their upper and lower edges. They are also called positive lenses. We'll now look at some terms that will often be used when discussing images formed by a convex lens. A symmetrical or double convex lens is a lens that bulges outwards equally on both sides. It is also called a biconvex lens. From here on, we'll assume our lens to be a biconvex lens. If such a lens were imagined to be a part of a sphere, then there'd be an imaginary line passing through the center of the sphere and joining the lens at its exact center, called principal axis, optic axis, or lens axis. A lens also has an imaginary vertical axis that bisects the symmetrical lens into halves. The junction of the vertical axis and the optic axis is the lens center or optical center. The focal point of the lens, F, is the point at which light rays come together after passing through the lens. Lenses can allow light to pass through either face, depending on where the incident rays are coming from. Hence, every lens has two possible focal points, called the object focus and image focus. We'll assume the thickness of the lens to be near zero. So, the lens center would be very close to the center of the curved portion of the lens. The distance from the lens center to the focal point is known as the focal length, F. An imaginary point called the 2F point is the point on the principal axis that is twice as far from the vertical axis as the focal point is. Hence we have two 2F points one on either side of the lens. Now that we've identified the terms related to a convex lens, let's look at some drawing tools. A ray diagram is a diagram that traces the path that light rays take for enabling an observer view a point on the image of an object. The first ray that we use for ray diagramming is the one parallel to the principal axis of the lens. Because it is parallel to the principal axis. It is called the P-ray. The second ray that is used is the one that passes through the object focus point of the lens. This ray is known as the F ray. A third ray that is used the C ray is the one passing through the center of the lens and essentially travels via the lens without deviation. See the P ray is parallel to principal axis, that's why it's P ray, F ray is passes through the focus, that's why it's called F ray and C ray is going through center of curvature, that's why it's called it need not be only along the optic axis as long as it passes through the lens center. Ray diagrams can be used to find out the image location, size, orientation, and type of image formed of objects placed at a given location behind a lens. Finally, in this how concept, we look at the three rules of refraction for a convex lens. An incident ray traveling parallel to the principal axis of a convex lens will refract through the lens and emerge through the image focus on the opposite side of the lens. 
an incident ray moving via the object focus on the way to the lens will refract through the lens and proceed parallel to the principal axis. An incident ray passing through the center of the lens will effectively travel in the same direction as entry, as though it was never refracted. The convex lens geometry leads us to explore five different positions of the object relative to the lens, as explained over the next five house. Here, we first look at image formation when the object is located at a point beyond the 2F point of the convex lens, with its base on the optic axis. To see how we can use ray diagrams to find the image, touch the object. Let's pick a point on the top of the object, and draw two incident rays the F ray and the P ray traveling towards the lens. Once these incident rays touch the lens, we'll bend them based on the rules of refraction for convex lenses. The two refracted rays are seen converging to a point on the opposite side of the lens. This point would be the image of the top of the object. We repeat this process for the bottom of the object the base lies on the optic axis, and hence any light ray from the base travels via the lens center straight through on this exact path. So, the image of the base also has to lie on the optic axis. We use this fact to build up the image completely. We now see that the image is located between the image focus, F, and the 2F point on the other side of the lens. In such a case where refracted rays pass through the image location, a real image is formed. The image itself is smaller than the object, and is inverted. Go on to the next how concept to see where an image we now position the object at the 2F point that is, a distance double the focal length from the convex lens center. To see how we can use ray diagrams to find the image, touch the object. Using ray diagram principles again, we trace one light ray the P ray that starts from the top of the object towards the lens, moves parallel to the principal axis and, after refraction exits via the image focus. We trace another ray from the top of the object that passes via the object focus on its way to the lens, and then deviates from the lens in a path parallel to the principal axis. These converging refracted rays again lead us to the location of the image of the top of the object. We use identical steps to locate the bottom of the image, and we see that the bottom lies on the principal axis itself. This is very similar to when we, we are using a mirror <coughs> for a concave mirror for uh, center of curvature. When the, when the object was placed on center of curvature, we knew that the image would also form the center of curvature, same size but inverted. Very similar. The image is now formed at the 2F point on the other side of the lens. The image is the same size as the object and is upside down. Jump to the next how concept to see where an image is formed if the object is moved slightly. We'll turn next to the case where the object is located between the 2F point and the object focus of the convex lens. To see how we can use ray diagrams to find the image, touch the object. Let's pick a point on the top of the object, and draw two incident rays the F ray and the P ray traveling towards the lens. Once these incident rays touch the lens, we'll bend them based on the rules of refraction for convex lenses.
the two refracted rays are seen converging to a point just beyond the 2F point on the opposite side of the lens. This point would be the image of the top of the object. We repeat this process for the bottom of the object and we see that the bottom lies on the principal axis itself. We can then build up the image completely. We find that the image is formed beyond the 2F point on the other side of the lens. As I am coming closer to this convex lens, the image is becoming bigger and bigger, or enlarged. The image is larger than the object and is inverted. Move to the next how concept to see where an image is formed if the object is at the object focus. We'll now move the object slightly closer to the lens and place it at the object focus of the convex lens. To see how we can use ray diagrams to find the image, touch the object. The first ray that is, the P ray from the top of the object moving parallel to the principal axis gets refracted and then moves through the image focus alright. But, the F ray that starts from the top of the object and passes via the object focus does not meet the lens at all because the object is sitting right on the focal point. It moves parallel to the vertical axis. So, it's now difficult to figure out where the image is formed. Oh dear. Have the ray diagram principles failed? Thus, Help is at hand. We'll use the third ray that is, the C ray from the object top that meets the lens at its optical center and proceeds without any deviation. This ray moves parallel to the first refracted ray, with no meeting point of the two refracted rays in sight. No matter where an observer looks at, he cannot find even a single point in space from which all the reflected rays appear to be diverging. The image is said to be formed at infinity. This is where the image is formed Practically, at infinity. no image is formed when the object is located at the object focus of a convex lens. Go on to the next how concept. Finally, we move the object to a point between the object focus and the optical center of the convex lens. To see how we can use ray diagrams to find the image, touch the object. The first ray that is, the P ray from the top of the object moving parallel to the principal axis gets refracted and passes via the image focus on the other side. The incident F ray from the top of the object cannot pass through the object focus on its way to the lens, but its extension backward does so. The refracted F ray moves parallel to the principal axis. This leads to a situation where the two refracted rays are diverging and do not converge anywhere in front of the lens. Hence we need to retrace the refracted rays backward through the lens till they appear to be emerging from a single point. This point would then represent the image of the top of the object. Similarly, when we apply ray diagram principles as in the previous concepts, we find that the bottom of the image appears to lie on the optic axis. We see that the image appears on the object side of the lens itself and farther away from the lens than the object. The image this time happens to be enlarged and upright. What you just saw in this and the previous four how concepts was the behavior. Okay, this is where, this is the only time when the image and the object will be the same side. This is where we take a, take a magnifying glass and if you take it very close to so very close to the writings of the book, we see an enlarged image. And we don't need a screen because the image is formed because the image is formed on the same side that of the object. So this is where this is the same same position where we should put we should put use a magnifying glass. Because in each of any other cases, previous cases, 
we were seeing the image was forming the opposite direction or opposite side of that of the object. But when I'm using a magnifying glass and getting it very close to this, if I have if the image would have formed in opposite direction, we're not able to see an enlarged image. So this is the condition. This is the condition for a magnifying glass to work. For a magnifying glass to work, when I'm bringing the object using a convex lens, where the object is between focus and optical center of this image. We explored five concepts previously, but is there a relationship between the object distance and image distance, as well as the object size and image size? Starting from a large value, as the object distance decreases that is, the object is moved closer to the convex lens, the image distance increases. All the while, the image height increases. At the 2f point, the object distance equals the image distance, and the object height equals the image height. As the object distance approaches one focal length, the image distance and image height approach a gigantic value. Basically, when the object distance is equal to exactly one focal length, there is no image. Then, changing the object distance to a value less than one focal length produces images that are upright, virtual, and located on the object side of the lens. Finally, if the object is very close to the lens center, the image too lies very close to the lens center, and the image height almost equals the object height. The mathematical relationship between the distances of the object and the image from the convex lens, and the focal length of the lens is called the lens equation. Since we assumed in the first how concept that we'd be looking at a thin convex lens, the lens equation for such lenses is, reciprocal of focal length equals reciprocal of object distance plus reciprocal of image distance. The object distance and focal length values are used with a positive sign for convex lenses. A negative value obtained for image distance indicates the image is virtual. The negative of the ratio of image distance to object distance is the lens magnification. This was this was exactly same in terms of mirror also. We use the same formula one by f is equal to one by u plus one by u. We'll do the sign convention later in the next class. Thus, magnification achieved by a virtual image is positive, indicating the image is upright. This clears the mystery surrounding a convex lens. This should also answer the question when a convex lens can't produce any image. When the object is at focus, uh, we will not be able to see any of the images produced in a convex lens. Let's see what happens next. If ever you hear someone talking about light beam expansion or image reduction, you can tell we show you here how a concave lens is useful in certain situations. When you are at home, the front door bell rings. You think someone's at the door. You go over to the front door and open it to look around for someone. You don't spot anyone around luckily or not but you do spy a package perched on the porch. Aha, maybe these were the skis you had asked for? You retrieve the package and step indoors, shutting the door behind you. Now, had you followed your mom's safety advice, here's what you would have instead done. When the doorbell rang, you would have used the door peep hole to look outside. You would have got a good view of the porch and area all around the front door, including the package and any shady characters lurking around. Luckily for you there was no one outside, and you could see the porch and the faraway beautiful mountains too. So, remember, 
Next time use the door peep hole to get a good view of the outside without anybody being able to peep in and see you. Go on and check the how concepts to see how a concave lens helps you see objects both far and near. Here's what we've got lined up for you the basics of a concave lens, some common terms, tools, and rules. Finally you get an idea of what's coming up next. Can just a couple of pieces of shaped glass produce a variety of effects? To find out more, touch the glass cylinder. A lens is a piece of glass or other transparent material that has curved and polished sides that can cause light rays to either converge or diverge. Lenses work on the principle of refraction or bending of light. A diverging lens or a concave lens is a lens that causes rays of light that are traveling parallel to its principal axis to diverge. So, so convex lens is something when you, when you put some parallel lens it will converge towards a point and a concave lens is something when we put some parallel rays on one surface it seems to be diverged from a point. So we have extended this refracted rays we could have found the focus somewhere out here. That's not a question, a concave lens diverges a parallel rays, a concave lens converges a parallel rays. Diverging lenses are thinner across their middle and thicker at their upper and lower edges. They are also called negative lenses due to their negative focal length, as we shall soon see. We'll now look at some terms that will often be used when discussing images formed by a concave lens. A symmetrical or double concave lens is a lens that curves inwards equally on both sides. It is also called a biconcave lens. From here on, we'll assume our lens to be a biconcave lens. If you imagine that a sphere is used to carve out such a lens, then the imaginary line passing through the center of the sphere and meeting the lens at its exact center would be the principal axis, also known as the optic axis or lens axis. A lens also has an imaginary vertical axis that bisects the symmetrical lens into halves. The meeting point of the vertical axis and the optic axis is the optical center or lens center. The diverging rays can be traced backward until they in See, this is what Concave lens is a lens when parallel rays strikes in one surface of this lens. The rays will diverge from a point, or they should appear to diverge from a point. It actually, does not happen, but it appears to. It appears to diverge from a point. This is known as principal focus of concave lens. Since if we if we see this this uh, as x axis and y axis. The principal focus is on the left side or on the negative side of x-axis. The focal length is negative for a concave lens. The focal length is negative for a concave lens. From this negative focal length, we now will come to know later that what is called plus power and minus power. We will come to know what is plus power and minus power. Later. But this is one thing I made when I am giving it information that uh, since the focal length, since the focal length or the principal focus is on the left side of the optical center, we know in a coordinate geometry the left side of zero is always negative. So the focal length is negative in a concave lens. Intersect at a point called the focal point of the diverging lens, F. Lenses can allow light to pass through either face based on where the incident rays are coming from. Hence, every lens has two possible focal points called the object focus and image focus. We'll assume the thickness of the lens to be near zero. So, the lens center would be very close to the center of the curved portion of the lens. The distance from the lens center to the focal point is known as the focal length, F. 
An imaginary point called the 2F point is the point on the principal axis that is twice as far from the vertical axis as the focal point is. We hence have two 2F points one on either side of the lens. Very similar to now that we've identified the terms associated with a concave lens, the terms are the same, the focus, the two focus, one is object focus, one is image focus, there are, there are two, two F, uh, which is the double the length of the focus, there is an optical, uh, optical center O at the center uh, of this lens. Let's look at some drawing tools. A ray diagram is a diagram that traces the path that light rays take for enabling an observer view a point on the image of an object. The first ray that we use for ray diagramming is the one parallel to the principal axis of the lens. It is called the P-ray. The second ray that is used is the one that passes through the object Just focus point. Hold on, uh, Vishani, I think has been logged out I'll just let her in when we are cutting this class. So uh, why are people logging out and logging out? Okay. I think everyone is in. of the lens. This ray is known as the F ray. The P ray is something that is parallel to your principal axis and F ray is something that passes through the focus. Okay. okay. Right. So exactly like your convex lens, concave lens, you use P ray, F ray and C ray to get the image of the uh, object. A third ray that is used, the C ray, is the one passing through the center of the lens and essentially travels via the lens without deviation. It need not be only along the optic axis as long as it passes via the lens center. Ray diagrams can be used to find out the image location, size, orientation, and type of image formed of objects placed at a given location behind a lens. Finally, in this how concept, we look at the three rules of refraction for a concave lens. Very important, listen to this very carefully. Any incident ray traveling parallel to the principal axis of a diverging lens will refract through the lens and travel in line with the focal point on the object or source side. That is, it travels in a direction after refraction such that its backward extension will pass through the image focus of the lens. An incident ray moving towards the object focus via the lens will refract through the lens and emerge parallel to the principal axis. Because in a convex lens, whenever there is a parallel rays, it would go and meet the focus, go and meet at the focus. But in a concave lens, it, instead of, it should have gone and meet the focus, but now it has become parallel, just opposite, because that was a converging lens and this is a diverging lens. So instead of it has diverged this ray from meeting at the focus and it made it parallel to the principal axis after refraction. And this An ray incident ray passing via the center of the lens will effectively travel in the same direction as its entry, as though it was never refracted. Based on the concave lens geometry, we could have five different positions of the object in relation to the lens, that are explored over the next five house. Here, we look at image formation when the object is located at a point beyond the 2F point of the concave lens, with its base on the optic axis. To see how we can use ray diagrams to find the image, touch the object. Let's pick a point on the top of the object, and draw two incident rays the F-ray and the P-ray traveling towards the lens. This dotted line shows without deviation, 
or without refraction, how would this ray go? Now, we should always draw this dotted line, then it's easy for us to draw the actual refracted rays. Instead of going to the focus, this will become parallel, and this P ray, which is parallel, will come back, will diverge in a way that if you extend it back towards the <clears throat> object side, it will go and meet the focus. Once these incident rays touch the lens, we'll refract them based on the rules of refraction for concave lenses. Both the refracted rays appear to diverge after striking the lens. Hence when extended back through the lens, they appear to meet at a point between the focal point and the lens center on the object's side of the lens. This point would be the image of the top of the object. We repeat this process for the bottom of the object the base lies on the optic axis, and hence any light ray from the base travels through the lens center without any refraction. So, the image of the base all Unlike the convex lens, that the image was in the opposite side that of the object. In a concave lens, when I have put the object behind 2F, beyond F is behind 2F, the image is formed, obviously diminished <coughs> and erect. In convex lens, it was inverted, but on the same side of that of the lens. That means we don't need a screen. We don't need a screen to get the image. It will form on the same side of that of the object. So has to lie on the optic axis. We use this fact to build up the image completely. The image here is a virtual image. Light does not actually pass through the image location. It only appears to a viewer as though all the refracted light from each part of the object is diverging from this virtual image location. See, uh, remember the, uh, you know, that uh, eye hole kind of example, uh, like uh, in this video you are seeing that you, know, you should not open the door without looking into the eye hole. Eye hole, this position is something like that. The image is, the image is from far off kind of a thing, the small lens. That means whatever the image that I'm forming, whatever the image that I'm form, that, that's forming, or whatever the object that's there outside, it will be, it will be diminished in a way that I can see through that eye hole. I can see through the eye Very similar to your ray of view mirror. In a ray of view mirror, what we used to do, we used to, we used to have a wide span. Like whatever big, small, or whatever cards behind me, it can be, it can be, the image will be formed smaller, diminished. So I will have a big span or a large span of view kind of a thing. Similar to that, similar, similar to that, in this, in this case also, what I'm happening when I'm looking through a pinhole, the object is far off beyond 2F uh, because this lens is too small. Its 2F is also very near. But I can see whatever outside, even the far off mountain in the example, in the far off mountain in front of me. Because whenever my object in a concave lens is beyond 2F, my image is formed between F, between focus and and between optical center and it is virtual that means it is i don't need a screen i don't need a screen for that i can see it virtually and i can see a diminished image that means i can see a lot of space i can see a lot of a lot of object a, even a bigger object can be shrinked down to a small space so i can see i have a wide wide field of view okay that is why it is used in a uh, you know this uh, what is this called? This eye hole. In eye hole, we have a small lens, which is a concave lens. So, any viewer would view a replica when looking along a line at this location. The image itself is smaller than the object, and is upright. Go on to the next how concept to see where an image is. Now bringing the we'll turn next to, to the case where the object is at the 2F point that is, a distance double the focal length from the concave lens center. To see how we can use ray diagrams to find the image, touch the object. 
we trace one light ray that starts from the top of the object towards the lens, parallel to its optic axis, and, after refraction and extension backward appears to pass via the image focus. We trace another ray the F ray from the top of the object whose extension through the lens would have passed via the object focus but bends off the lens in a path parallel to the optic axis. Very similar rays. These two diverging rays again lead us to the location of the image of the top of the object. We use so I think to I need to leave and rejoin. And we Why? see that the bottom lies on the optic. Any problem? Hello. 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 axis itself. We find that the image is formed between the focal point and lens center on the object side of the lens. The image is upright but diminished. Jump to the next how concept to see where an image is formed if the object is moved slightly closer to the lens. We'll now position the object at some point between the 2F point and the image focus of the concave lens. To see how we can use ray diagrams to find the image, touch the object. Using ray diagram principles again, we trace one light ray that starts from the top of the object towards the lens, parallel to the optic axis, and after refraction and extension backward appears to pass via the image focus. We trace another ray the F ray from the top of the object that is in line with the lens and the object focus, and then bends off the lens in a path parallel to the optic axis. We find that the refracted rays pertaining to the top of the object when extended backward appear to converge at a point between the focal point and lens center on the object side. These diverging rays again lead us to the location of the image of the top of the object. We use identical steps to locate the bottom of the image, and we see that the bottom lies on the optic axis itself. The image is upright but diminished. Move to the next how concept to see where an image is formed if the object is at the image focus. When I'm changing the object position from B on to F to 2F and now between 2F and F, is the image position changing? No. It's it's very similar, it's very similar to your your convex uh, mirror, remember? There was only two types of images will form. There we, we didn't do all this thing because we had only focus inside the mirror. Focus and center of provision inside the mirror. So in front of the mirror means anywhere in front of the mirror. Here also since we have the lens as a transfer in both the sides, we have this 2F and F placed on both the sides. But ultimately it is not making any difference. We will go and see what happens when I am putting the object at length. To do this we just have to draw the ray diagrams wherever the rays are meeting. We'll, we'll be able to get that image. Next, we look at a case where the object is moved slightly closer to the concave lens and is placed at its image focus. To see how we can use ray diagrams to find the image, touch the object. The first ray that is, the P ray from the top of the object moving parallel to the optic axis gets refracted such that the backward extension of its refraction passes via the image focus. 
The F ray that starts from the top of the object and is in line with the object focus meets the lens and gets refracted parallel to the optic axis. When the extension of the refracted F ray meets the extension of the refracted P ray, we have arrived at the image of the top of the object. We use similar steps to locate the bottom of the image, and we see that the bottom lies on the optic axis itself. We now find that the image is located between the focal point and lens center on the object side of the lens. So it has not changed. The image continues to be straight up and smaller in size than exactly the object. The same. That's why when I'm looking through a go on to the next how con that's why when I'm looking through this uh, you know, this uh, view uh, view viewfinder or view hole in this uh, in the door wherever the object is I will get a similar image it's not that far off object I will be able to see and near of object I will not be able to see I can see everything. Only, only to see how we can use ray diagrams to find the image, touch the object. Tracing the incident and refracted rays once again leads us to the conclusion that the refracted rays are diverging, and do not converge anywhere in front of or beyond the lens. Hence we need to retrace the refracted rays backward through the lens till they appear to be emerging from a single point. This point that represents the top of the image is very close to the lens center. Similarly, when we apply ray diagram principles as in the previous concepts, we find that the bottom of the image lies on the optic axis. We now find that the virtual image is much closer to the lens center compared to the previous case. Notice that the image so formed is upright and on the object side of the lens. What you just saw in this and the previous four how concepts was the behavior of the image based on position of the object behind a concave lens. Is there a relationship between the size of the object and its image based on object position? There is definitely a tie-in between object distance and image distance, as well as object size and image size. As the distance of an object from a concave lens is reduced, the image distance decreases and the image size increases. So, as an object approaches the lens, its virtual image on the same side of the lens approaches the lens as well. At the same time, the image becomes larger, but never exceeds the size of the object. In all positions of an object behind a concave lens, the image is located on the same side as the object, is a virtual image, is an upright image, and is reduced in size compared to the object. Unlike convex lenses, Concave lenses always produce images that share these properties virtual, upright, and diminished. The location of the object does not affect these properties of the image. Hence, the properties of images formed by concave lenses are easily predicted. The mathematical relationship between the distances of the object and the image from the concave lens and the focal length of the lens is called the lens equation. Since we assumed in the first how concept that we'd be looking at a thin concave lens, the lens equation for such lenses is, reciprocal of focal length equals reciprocal of object distance plus reciprocal of image distance. The image distance and focal length values are used with a negative sign for concave lenses, while the object distance has a positive value. The negative of the ratio of image distance to object distance is the lens magnification. Thus, magnification achieved by a virtual image is positive, indicating the image is upright. This wraps up concepts of how a concave lens works. By now, 
you should be able to answer the question why a concave lens can never magnify an object. Okay, uh, let's not go into sign convention. Let's let's understand. So, the thing that you have to practice with drawing terms is uh, only the only your uh, convex lens. This picture talks about the entire thing about uh, refraction of light through lenses, right? So where well, we would be focusing mainly upon is this, right? <coughs> refraction uh, through a convex lens, because only in convex lens we see there is a change in image if we are changing the position. So, so kindly practice this. I will share this page with you. So kindly practice this, and then this uh, <coughs> this table says. The use of this lens, which is important, wherever I am using this lens, like at infinity, I am using as a burning glass. We all have done this, or we have seen people do this, using a magnifying glass and try to get this sun rays focused at a particular point to burn. The same can be used in a in a solar cooker or a solar oven kind of a thing, so, right? And beyond f two is camera lens, so we should practice. This is important. Practice. Uh, the position of the object in front of a convex lens. Now the six positions. That's it. Practice each one of it. I'll send you this. Okay. And we know for a concave lens, it's uh, there's only two. Uh, I mean, the image itself is quite diminished. So for a telescope, we use it. We use the concave lens in a telescope because you know, we can get even the stars. In front of us, it could be diminished, but then it is on the same side that of the object. That is where we do we don't have we don't have a screen where I'm using a telescope. We're just looking at the telescope and seeing the same thing. And uh, same concave just for short sightedness or myopic eyes, we use a uh, concave lens, mostly a convex or concave, but then we use a convex lens, with, uh, concave lens because it diverges things that we've seen in the video. So this table is important. I mean, there's only two positions to think of. Then other things that are important are obviously the principal axis, the radius of curvature, the optical center, a few definition of this, what are the rays we'll be using, kind of a thing. Uh, the lens formula, some will write one by f equal to one by v minus one by u. That and uh, what is the power of a lens, the unit of its diopter, how it is related to your focal length and all these things that we'll be discussing on our next class. Okay, the next class we'll be discussing our lens formula, the magnification factor, we'll be doing few of the numericals uh, and we will be trying to find out the power of your spectacles and uh, and see what is the focal length of that, how it is related to the focal length, what is the magnifying power. We'll do all those, all 